Next, let us prove that. phi composed psi is equal to identity. Okay. So, let us just write down once again what we have to show. So, this is from subfields psi goes to okay, subgroups uh, of alpha l over e and here we have phi right which once again goes to subfields right and what is this map so we start with a subfield f we send it to galva l over f okay and then this subgroup it gets mapped to the invariance okay yeah so this is i've just used the definitions of phi and psi okay so to show that phi composed psi is equal to identity we need to show that f is equal to both these subfields are equal i am sorry l right okay so let's see how to prove this so first note that it is for, okay first note that f is obviously contained in l galois l over f okay why is this what is l galois l over f this is those alpha in l such that phi of alpha is equal to alpha for all phi in galois l over f yeah but what does it mean to say that uh, if phi is in galois l over f then this means that phi is an automorphism of l which is identity on f right so thus phi belongs to galois l over f implies that phi of alpha is equal to alpha for all alpha in f right so therefore clearly so this implies that f is contained in sorry l galois l over f right if we take any alpha in f and if we take any phi in galois l over f then phi of alpha is equal to alpha yeah so therefore by definition of the invariance of l under galois l over f we get that f is contained in okay this is just follows very easily from the definition so we really have to prove the other way the other inclusion okay so let us prove that i mean we will prove by contradiction suppose uh, there exists theta in in this field such that theta does not belong to f okay so in other words we have this f is properly contained in f theta this is contained in l l over f okay so uh, 
let p of x be the irreducible polynomial and let me just say that all these are contained in L and all these contain E. Okay. So, now let P of x be the irreducible polynomial of theta over f. Okay. So, since L is separable over E, this implies that L is also separable over f, this implies that theta is separable over f. which implies that p of x has distinct roots, p of x has no repeated roots. Right. So, therefore, this since this degree of extension, so we have 1, this is equal to degree of p of x. So, let and let us let us say this is s some number s. Okay. So, let theta equal to theta 1, theta 2 up to theta s be the distinct roots of p of x. Okay. So, then there is an isomorphism phi from f theta 1 to f theta 2, which is identity on f, right, which is send on the coefficients its identity and we just send theta 1 to theta 2. This is possible because theta 1 and theta 2 are roots of this irreducible polynomial p of x. Yeah, This polynomial is irreducible over f of f. Okay. So, we put this, okay. so we look at this diagram. So, this is E. Here we have f theta 1, there is isomorphism phi, right, and we just put this into E bar, right, and f theta 1, so theta 1 was theta, this is contained in L, yeah. So, we can take this map. We can take this map and we can extend it to L psi. Okay. And uh, since L is normal, we have psi of L is contained inside L and since L is finite over E, this implies psi of L is equal to L. Okay. So, thus and moreover, moreover psi is identity on F. Okay, yeah. Because how did we construct psi? We took, we first took this phi, yeah, and we extended phi to a homomorphism from L to E bar, and phi is identity on F. So therefore, the extended map psi that's also identity on F. 
Okay. Uh, so thus we get an element psi in Galois L over F such that psi of theta 1 is equal to theta 2. Okay. But theta 1 as theta 1 is equal to as theta is equal to theta 1 and all these roots are distinct this implies there exists a psi in Galois L over F such that psi of theta is not equal to theta. We have constructed an automorphism of L over F which moves this theta, but this is a contradiction. Yeah, This is a contradiction since we started with a theta in which was invariant under all elements of gal L over, L over F. Okay. So, this is a contradiction. So, this con this contradicts the hypothesis that theta belongs to L Galois L over F, yeah, which says that for all psi in Galois L over F, we have psi of theta is equal to theta. Okay. So, therefore, so this implies that f is forced to be equal to L cal y L over f. Right. We had taken this theta to be in something which is not in f right? and then we got a contradiction. Okay, yeah. So this completes a proof that phi composed psi is equal to identity. Okay. So indeed, we have proved that. So thus, we have proved that the subgroups. of Galois L over E are in bijection with subfields F which are contained in this thing. Okay. So, this proves part 1 of the theorem. This, this proves we have proved part 1. Right. Next, let us prove part 2. So, now we have to take a normal subgroup and we have to show that when we take the, the invariance under this normal subgroup, we are going to get a normal extension of P. Okay. So, let us prove part 2. So, let H contained in Galois L over E be a normal subgroup. Okay. So, we need to show that L h which let us recall is those alpha in L says that h alpha is equal to alpha for all h in h is a normal extension.
of E. Okay. So, recall the definition of a normal extension. So, we have L H, this contains E. We have E, E is fixed, E sitting inside E bar, and we have to start with some phi. Yeah, and we have to show that the image of phi is contained in L H, that is what we have to show. Yeah. But now, first note that this L H is also sitting inside L. Yeah. So, first we can extend this to a psi from L to E bar. Okay. We are starting with a phi, we will extend it to some any psi. Since L is normal, since L is a normal extension of E, this diagram the image of psi is going to land inside L, right. So, this diagram is going to be like this. So, here we have L h, but right now we do not know if the restriction of psi to L h lands inside L h. So, a priori the image only lands over here. Okay, and our aim is to show that it will actually land over here. That will prove that it is a normal extension, because we started with an arbitrary phi and we have proved that we extend it to some psi. So, to say that the image of phi lands inside L h, it is enough to show that the image of psi of L h is contained inside L h. Right? So, I am saying that it suffices to show to show that phi of L h is contained in L h, it suffices to show that psi of L h is contained in L h. Right? Because psi restricted to L h is equal to phi. Yeah? After all, we have extended phi. Okay, so, let us prove this. Right. So, H is normal, H is a normal subgroup of Galois L over E. Okay. So, let us make this observation once and for all. If we have a finite extension, finite let us say Galois extension and psi of L is contained in L, this implies psi of L is equal to L. Okay, this is something which we proved in the previous class, but also in today's class I sketched how what we did, it is just a one line argument. So, you can revise this. Okay. So, if so H is a normal subgroup of Galois L over E, so this implies that, so psi inverse of H of psi belongs to H for all psi in Galois L over E. Right? That is the definition of a normal subgroup. Right? So, in other words, so this implies that psi inverse of H of psi is equal to some H 1, where H 1 belongs to H. Yeah, and h 1 belongs to h. So, let us apply this on an element a in L h. Yeah. Let a be an element in L h. Right. So, then psi inverse h of psi applied on a is equal to h 1 of a. h 1 belongs to h that implies that h 1 of a is equal to a because L h is yeah, L h by definition is those elements of L which are fixed under all elements of H. So, this is equal to A. Okay. Yeah, and psi is an automorphism, therefore we can apply psi to both sides. 
psi of h of psi of a psi of a and yeah and this happens for all psi in galois so what does this mean this implies that h of psi of a is equal to psi of a for all psi in galois l over e and all h in h. Right? And this implies by definition psi of a belongs to l h. Right? So, therefore, we started with yeah. So, we have shown that this psi restricted to l h has image in l h. So, this implies that psi of L h is contained in L h. Okay. So, thus uh, L h is a normal extension. Of e. Okay. So, we started with a phi, we want to show that the image of phi is inside L h, we extended phi to L, now we use the normality of L to arrive at this diagram, yeah. and finally, uh, once we are here, we use the fact that h is normal to show that psi of L h is actually contained in L h. Okay. So, this shows that if h is a normal subgroup, then L h is a normal extension of E. Now, let us prove the converse. Yeah. So, conversely, suppose that L h is a normal extension of E. Okay. then we need to show that h contained in this galois l over e is a normal subgroup okay so how do we prove this so, we will use the restriction map. So, note that. So, note that as L h is normal, we get a restriction map, right. So, this is from Galois L over E to Galois L h over E. Right, and what is this map? We have already seen this. So, we have L contains L h, it contains E. We have an element psi in Galois L over E, it means psi fits into a diagram like this. Right, and since L h is assumed to be normal, it means that the image of L h under psi is going to land inside L h. Yeah, we could embed all this is contained inside E bar, right. So, we start with a psi and we L is contained inside E bar. So, psi restricted to L h is a map from L h to E bar. Right, and L h is normal. What does that mean? It means that the image of L h is contained in L h. Right. So, therefore, this that is the restriction map. So, this is just psi and we just restrict it to L h. Yeah. And it, it will indeed be an automorphism of L h. 
Okay. So, we claim that, so clearly this is a group homomorphism, right, because I mean if we take two maps psi 1 and psi 2, psi 1 composed psi 2 is going to restrict to psi 1 restricted to L h composed psi 2 restricted to L h. Okay. So, clearly this is a group homomorphism. Yeah. Okay, so, we claim that this map is surjective. Right? That is also something which we have seen many times, yeah, an argument which we have seen many times. Why is that? Because we can start with any automorphism from L H to L H, right. This is let us say L and we have this is contained E bar. Let us say we have an automorphism phi. So, now first we extend phi to a map from L to E bar to psi, yeah, this is something which we can do, yeah. And now since L is normal, it will mean that the image of psi lands inside L, right. So, thus given phi in Galois L h over E there exists psi in Galois L over E such that psi restricted to L h is equal to phi. Yeah, so, therefore, this group homomorphism L over E to Galois L h over E is surjective. Okay. Now, let us let k be the kernel, yeah. so let k be the kernel. So, it is clear that this Galois L over L h is contained in k, right. Why is that? elements in Galois L over L h look are automorphisms phi from L to L says that phi restricted to L h is identity right. So, either we can write like this or we can write like this yeah. right elements phi in Galois L over L h are those phi such that when we restrict it to L h we get identity right and what is this map this map is precisely the restriction map. So, if we take phi yeah so so thus if we take if phi belongs to this subgroup Galois L over L h which is contained in Galois L over E then clearly, then by definition phi restricted to L h is equal to identity on L h right. Yeah. I mean when we the obviously the identity element of this aut this automorphism group is the identity automorphism L h. Right. So, phi restricted to L h is giving the yeah, identity. So, therefore, okay. so we have this yeah. and now we will okay. look. So, what is the cardinality? Of k. Okay. So, since this group homomorphism is surjective, since 
the restriction map is surjective. This implies that cardinality of k is equal to cardinality of this group Galois L over E divided by cardinality of Galois L H over E. Right? If we have a surjective group homomorphism from G to H, then cardinality of the kernel is cardinality of G divided by cardinality of H yeah? when G is finite. Right? So, this, but we know that since L over E is a gal finite Galois extension, this is equal to L over E. And since by the same reason, this is equal to L H over E. Yeah, but now this is equal to L over L H into L H over E divided by L H over E. This is equal to L over E. Okay. On the other hand, in one of this theorem, of the theorem we prove that or uh, okay well we don't need this yeah on the other hand sorry on the other hand cardinality of galois l over lh is also equal to this thing Okay. So, therefore, we ha so what do we conclude? We have Galois L over L H, this sitting inside K and both of them have the same cardinality. So, this proves that Galois L over L H is equal to the kernel. Yeah. Now, by part 1, so what did part 1 say? Uh, so, so, remember what we proved, uh, okay, sorry, this is what we proved. When we proved this psi compose phi is equal to identity, what we actually proved is that if we start with the subgroup H, then H is equal to Galois L over L H. Okay? So, we will use that now. So, we get that by part 1, this Galois group H is actually equal to Galois L over L H, yeah, which is equal to K. Thus, we have proved that that H is the kernel of a group homomorphism. This implies that H is novel. Okay. So, this completes the proof of 2. Okay. And this also completes, so this also completes, uh, the above also shows proofs 3. So, what is, what did we want to prove in part 3? So, in part 2, we wanted to prove that uh, normal subgroups are in bijection with normal extensions. Okay? And in part 3, we wanted to show that if we take a normal subgroup, if we take a normal subgroup, then we have this restriction map, right? which is precisely the restriction map which we considered when we were proving part 2. Yeah? 
and the claim in path 3 is the kernel of this restriction map is precisely h right this this is the claim of part 3 okay let me give this restriction map some name uh, let me call it delta or maybe i can just call it restriction the kernel of restriction is precisely h that is part 3 yeah and this is exactly what we have proved over here right we have taken this homomorphism this restriction map over here from galois l over e to galois l h over e we take its kernel we said that the kernel obviously contains uh, the kernel so, we first check that the kernel contains because of obvious reasons this Galois L over L H. Yeah. Then we show that both Galois L over L H and the kernel they have the same cardinality. Yeah. And finally, we use part 1 where we said that H is equal to Galois L over L H. That proves that H is exactly the kernel which also proves part 3. So, we will end the lecture here.